With the other three techniques in terms of rendering, line proximity, and crosshatch, you're expected to be very precise and much more controlled. Now the last one is not as controlled. It's, I, I like to describe it as controlled chaos, okay? Because it's scribble line. So scribble line is not a pattern. It looks like it is irrational. It looks like it's erratic. It just looks like a chaotic line. However, we as artists are going to control that chaos. We're going to control that irrational line and make sense out of it to create values and create a sense of three-dimensionality on our two-dimensional plane. So again, same thing. You'll notice that I keep on starting the same way in terms of I start with my 4-H pencil because it's easier to get darker than it is to get lighter. So I'm going to start in the background here once again because it makes my life a little bit easier and it's the largest area so you could actually see how I'm shading in here holding the pencil towards the back and I'm making a very erratic scribble line and notice I'm going against the uh, the cone I'm going against the edge of the cone so I'm able to control my line as I get to that edge to start to create the edge of the cone I'm not going to use a line to define the objects, I'm using value. I cannot stress that enough. I know some of you are like, you keep saying that. Well, I keep saying it because it's very important. I want to make sure that you're doing it. If you see a line between the objects, and that's how you can tell that one object is in front of the other one, you're not using value. You're using line to create those edges. And when you look at this, there are no lines. they are edges. Edges of one object against another. So as I come in here, I'm going to come back over into the back and over this way. And you'll notice how quickly, how much quicker I could actually fill up the space. Okay, it's all a matter of pressure and separating my scribble. Okay, and I start to create my background pretty quickly. All right, now I'm actually going to be able to create a little bit more value over here. I'm going to jump over my tube because it's dark. And you'll notice that I'm going to actually use a tighter scribble. But because it is a softer pencil, I'm rotating, if you pay attention to the words, I'm wrote, well, you can't really see them there, right? But I'm rotating the pencil to get a sharper edge. Because like I said before, trying to draw with a blunt pencil does not work. It's pointless. Dad joke. Nailed it. Okay. So you get the idea, right? You see how I'm actually coming around in here. As I get towards another edge of an object, Notice how I go a little bit tighter with my scribble so that way I don't necessarily go into the object I don't want to. You'll notice this texture tends to be more of a natural looking texture. You could use this to create softer textures such as on stuffed animals, um, natural objects. And again, just like the other techniques, this one is typically used on top of rendering and modeling. You'll notice here now I'm going to make this corner of the wall disappear in terms of the line that I use to guide me. See? It's gone. All right? I'm going to come back in and I'm going to start to add a little bit more in here. And now you can definitely see that these objects are standing out against the background. I could go darker and I will later. Okay, here with the uh, the the sphere, which tends to be one of the toughest objects. All right, I'm going to jump into my 2H, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the entire sphere just to kind of create a light value. Now, you'll notice that I really didn't show you how to do the cone in any of these videos. The reason for that is by showing you the other objects and everything else in there, you should be able to figure out and apply what you know to the cone. Okay. It's a combination of the other objects. Now I can actually go into my HB pencil. Now that I've done that, with my HB pencil, I'm actually going to start in the dark area, and I'm going to actually start fairly dark. Okay, this is what works for me. I come into here, so I tighten up my scribble. Coming in here, focusing on that shadow, and I start to separate my scribble as I'm starting to get a little bit lighter, lightening up my scribble line. So that way I can start to blend into the background. Again, if you catch yourself going into a pattern like doing circles, you're not using a scribble line. This one tends to go a lot faster than the other ones. If you could hear my pencil, every once in a while I'm still moving, but I'm not necessarily making contact with the paper. 
and you can start to see that I'm starting to create the illusion of three-dimensionality, right? Okay, it's not done yet, but you get the idea. I still need to kind of work in a little bit of contrast in here so that way the sphere pops out against the background. I think it may have gone too dark, so I may need to lighten with my kneaded eraser, but you get the idea, right? Okay, that is scribble line. So now you've, you've learned all the four different techniques in how to apply them to the actual um, still life drawings so using your resource and your reference image. So you should be good to go. All right, have fun.